I'm Nicolas Pereira, I'm a Chilean microsurgeon, and I would like to thank the organizing committee for this kind invitation and to have the opportunity to share with you all people. Um, what I'm going to talk about, it's something very important in my opinion, it's uh, new imaging studies for microsurgical planning. Because in the microsurgical procedure, preoperative planning is one of the most important thing. You can use uh, color doppler, handheld doppler, CT angiography, but nowadays we are using thermal imaging, but not the classical thermal imaging. Uh, we're using smartphone therm uh, thermal cameras. Before doing this, we perform a study that we compare the CT angiography that is gold standard with uh, the hotspot detected by the thermal imaging um, with the smartphone camera. And we find out that it's very high the concordance between these two methods. And in this video, you can see how accurate it is to detect the perforator when you have a hotspot um, in the ALT area. And you will see now that the sign with the high hold doppler is accurate and match perfectly. Or in this other case, probably you can see the different hotspots on the ALT. You can have one there, another there, and the third one proximal. And then when you go to the OR interpretatively, you can see clearly these uh, perforators in the same places that you mark the hotspots. So we perform other studies, uh, for example, in this paper with uh, Dr. Halleck, we reported our experience uh, using smartphone camera, thermal camera in lower extremity reconstruction. Or um, recently we published with uh, our friends of UK and Italy a uh, systematic review about the accuracy of the infrared thermography. And I can tell you that we can use this technology in propeller flaps. Uh, this is a dorsal defect after a sarcoma excision and you have different perforators around the defect and you can choose your perforator uh, to design and perform your propeller flop and you can have these successful results or in keystone flaps that you know that are um, perforator based uh, flaps you can identify the perforators you don't have to see the perforators but you can trace them and check the hotspots with handheld doppler. And then you can design your flap, harvest, and have a very nice result in the posterior aspect of the thigh. Another case of keystone flap, uh, an spot the bite uh, defect, uh, two perforators um, around the defect located with the um, thermography in, in the smartphone and you can have very nice results again. F uh, thermal imaging for flap monitoring is another great tool. Um, if you compare the uh, temperature of the flap with the surrounding tissue, you, will, you, you don't have to um, have more than 2 Celsius degrees. More than 2 Celsius degrees probably it's a red flag, it's an alert that you have to be aware that probably your for your flap will have problems. And also for the globin injuries, when you don't know how many tissue is going to survive, uh, in this case we didn't do anything, just check the temperature and you have to use the same concept of two Celsius degrees difference between the, um, the traumatized tissue and also surrounding tissue. And if you have more than two Celsius degrees, uh, that tissue probably will, uh, will be necrosed in upcoming days. And finally for electrical burns, uh, classically we uh, wait 7 to 10 days to have the delimitation, demarcation of the uh, necrosis, uh, but with thermal imaging, if this is a day 2, uh, you can see clearly the zone of coagulation, zone of stasis and zone of hyperemia and you can do excision and the flap right away uh, without how, how to wait uh, a lot of time for the reconstruction. 
And that's why I think, and we, uh, in, in my uh, department, we, we think that um, thermal imaging is the new uh, reconstructive surgeon's stethoscope. You can check all this information in, uh, in, in a paper that we recently published in La Revista Chilena, Revista Latinoamericana de Cirugía Plástica. So, um, if you want to do skip flap, uh, the problem that you have that most of the time you have an actual pattern skip flap, and in that cases the hot spot doesn't doesn't uh, is is not easy to locate because you will have a very big hot spot since it's an actual pattern flap. So what we are using in these cases. Uh, is CT and geography. Uh, what we learned with, uh, from our friends from Korea that you have two different patterns uh, and the most of the time in our cases are actual pattern and they describe that you have a deep perforator inside of the medial perforator, superficial perforator inside in the superficial fascia of the medial perforator and then you have the actual pattern. But the problem that uh, we found when I came back to do these flaps in my patients is that is that the thickness of the flap on the Korean uh, population is very thin but in our patients and probably most of the Western countries patients we have a thick uh, flap in the in the skip area so I compared this uh, BMI uh, of my patients with Korean and Japanese patients and of course we have a great difference. Most of our patients and probably most of the Western countries patients are overweight or obese so the flap is different. So other thing that we learn from um, Asian uh, papers that the perforator is located lateral and cephalic um, to the pubic tubercle in an oval of 4.2 by 2 centimeters, but in my opinion, bony landmarks are not useful for patients that are obese or overweight with a thick um, adipose panicle. And if you want to perform a tiny skip flap with that oval, sometimes you will have the perforator outside of your flap. So uh, I told you before that it's described that the perforated perforator it's it has a deep perforating site and a superficial perforating site in the same level, but we found, found out that the perforator in our Western patients uh, has a deep perforating site that is point D, then has a distance that you have to dissect, and then you have a point S that is a superficial perforating site. This is what I told you that is uh, the distance that you have to dissect and to be aware when you rise your flap because the level of the deep perforating site, point D, and the superficial perforating site in the superficial fascia, point S, is not at the same level. So that's why we uh, propose this new planning method to easily harvest the skip flap and it's uh, published in the JRM and uh, this is the western skip because Western patients are different from the Asian patients. So this is based on the CT angio and uh, you have to identify point D that is the deep perforating site on the deep fascia of the middle branch and point S that is the perforating site on the superficial fascia. You have to take different measurements from the umbilicus in the Y axis and from the midline in the X axis. Let's see here how it works. So I told you deep perforating side and superficial perforating side. In this video, as TT and geography, it's one millimeter slices. We place the, cur uh, the, the tracker on the midline. We take the measurements from the midline, from the umbilicus, the number of the slice. And again, the superficial point, the point S from the umbilicus and from the midline. We mark this information on the patient's skin with a y and x axis and then we can check point D and point S that it match perfectly and interoperatively both point D and point S match with the preoperative marking so this is very accurate for pre-op planning
So this is what we used to use for skip flap point D, point D and point S, but probably was not enough. I wanted more, and that's why we went back uh, with radiologists to perform this 3D reconstruction based on the CT angiography to see clearly the vascular anatomy of the inguinal area and the lymph node anatomy. And how can we take this information and use for the patient? And that's why we think like millennials in these cases and we use and started using augmented reality. But how do we use that? With the smartphone. We download an app, the name is um, Camera Lucida AR, and we published this in JPRAS. And uh, we upload the image, the 3D reconstruction, to our smartphone using the Augmented Reality app. And uh, we use this uh, image to mark all the inguinal vascular anatomy, the lymph nodes, and then you can perform and plan your flap very safely and easily uh, to teach and to perform. Here you can see all the vascular anatomy and we can check the deep branch, superficial branch of the skip, and the superficial inferior epigastric artery. Intraoperatively, we can see all the structures, the vascular anatomy, in the same place that we preparatively planned. So, that's why we can perform very nice skip flaps for the sole, very shallow, um, and donor side and very thin flaps for the for the sole, dorsum of the foot very important to have thin thin flaps without any flap modeling. Um, for the leg, of course, perforated to perforated approach is very important to have to keep in mind. Uh, in the knee, the same perforator to perforator, very nice skip flap, uh, property blend with augmented reality. Uh, when you have double defects. Uh, bilateral skip flaps or extensive defects again bilateral the skip flaps you can perform very safe and easily but if you talk about lymphatic supermicrosurgery you can also use uh, augmented reality you all know and you will see in the next lectures that uh, ICG lymphography it's uh, in my opinion the gold standard you can preoperative pre plan and also diagnose lymphedema this linear pattern and the problem we have in western countries is ICG it's uh, the dye it's around three hundred dollars it's very expensive for the patient but we do the green day we gather a group of patients um, eight ten patients uh, and we do the diagnostic and the planning ICG lymphography the green day we use only one uh, um, bile for all these patients and we can mark the ICG uh, pattern of the patient and you have three options. You can uh, do the surgery right away, you can give a sharpie to the patient to mark the skin until the day of the surgery or you can use augmented reality. In this case it's augmented reality microsurgical planning with a smartphone for lymphobenous anastomosis. You can check this paper in PRS um, 2019. In this case, this is the green day, ICG lymphography or lower extremity lymphedema. We are seeing a linear pattern with a, a diffuse patch. This is the proper, the, the, the pictures, standardized pictures. And this is the day of the surgery. We don't do ICG lymphography again. We just upload the picture to our smartphone, augmented reality app, and we mark, uh, we overlap the image with the, with the camera and we mark the, pa the pattern and we plan our decisions and we can perform LBA very safely and in the same place that we plan. We perform of course multiple L LBAs and in this case upper extremity lymphedema uh, on the right side we can see very nice results a reduction of excess volume of 54 percent or this left lower extremity lymphedema uh, we have very nice reduction of excess volume of 71%. And if you, we, we come back to property planning, uh, we are now using something very, very interesting. It's virtual surgical planning. We all know that uh, in craniomaxillofacial surgery, 
uh, you use this very frequently, but in extremity reconstruction is not described yet. Um, we are going to publish this uh, in PRS in the upcoming months. And we use this uh, virtual surgical planning or BSP for complex extremity cases. Uh, I mean, multiple defects or different component defects. defects. So we use Horus open, open source software we mark the perforator, in this case in the ILT area, and we trace back until the main vessel. We do the 3D reconstruction, we crop the image, we, we see the perforators and mark the, the flap that we are going to use. In this case, we want a double skin pad flap. We uh, see the marks the, the, of the perforator and we, are, we have to dissect the pedicle virtually that's the pedicle as you can see there and we're going to do the chimeric uh, double skin puzzle AOT flap and that's the virtual surgical planning and I'm going to show you how can we use this this is a um, an open tibial fracture with a double skin defect we can take all the skin healthy skin and do a big flap or do this more elegant procedure with a double skin paddle ALT virtually surgical plan and the inset is very nice and elegant or in, in chimeric bone skin flap with the osteocutaneous defect after a gunshot we plan a skip flap with uh, ASIS with bone uh, based on the deep branch that's a flap that's the inset and you solve both defect uh, osteocutaneous the bone def bony defect and the um, soft tissue defect. So finally, if you go, if you want to innovate in microsurgery, probably you will fail sometimes. And when I fail, I always remember what Alba Edison said about failure when he invented the electrical bulb. That there, they were not ten thousand failures was an invention with ten thousand steps. So remember that and just. Keep going and never, never give up. Thank you very much. I hope to see you all next year in WSRM Cancun. And I would like to share all other, other ideas and experience with all of you. And if you have any questions, I'm glad to answer. Thank you very much and have a good day.